fencing master. Now there's a title that gets thrown around more often than Moby Dick. What does it mean? Anything? What exactly is a fencing master? What does a fencing master actually do? How do you get to be one? As a recovering fencing master, I think I can answer those questions for you. A fencing master is someone who trains people in the use of the sword, art, science, and spirit. A fencing master is a master teacher, not a master fencer. Now, you should be a pretty good fencer because you'll have to demonstrate for your students what it is you want them to do. But it's much, much more important for you to be a good teacher. To be a good teacher, you must have complete command of the material, you must be able to communicate that material to your students, and most of all, you must be able to inspire your students to want to learn it. At the academy, we used to say that a fencing master was someone who could teach the use of any sword to any person for any purpose. We also used to say that a fencing master was someone that you could give a completely alien weapon that he'd never seen before. And by the end of the day, he could train on how to use it. Of course, we also used to say sometimes that a fencing master was someone that you could lock into an empty room with a cannonball, and by the end of the day, he'd have either lost it or fucked it up. But it's good not to take yourself too seriously. The job of training people for physical performance goes back a long ways. You could trace it to ancient Greece. Physical education was considered a foundational element of a boy's education. The purpose was to cultivate strength, endurance, and martial skill that would be required for war and for a healthy old age. They were trained by private tutors known as pedotribes. But the fencing master really makes his appearance during the Renaissance. Prior to that time, a, a man only wore a sword when he was preparing to go out into battle. Sometime during the mid-1400s, civilian gentlemen began to affect the habit of wearing a sword as part of their everyday attire. The fashion appears to have originated in Spain, but by lunchtime it had spread throughout Europe and was bigger than the hula hoop. This crazy new fad produced a different kind of a sword, longer, lighter, leaner than the military sword, and one that favored the use of the point. It was christened Espada Ropera, meaning the sword you wear with your clothes, as opposed to being the sword you wear with your armor. We know the Espada Ropera as the rapier. Then and now, the principal job of the fencing master is to teach the civilian use of the sword for the duel and for self-defense. That is the sine qua non of being a fencing master. Now, as far as work goes, a fencing master has four main gigs, and you should be able to do all four of them excellently. First, and most importantly, a fencing master is a teacher. Since we no longer fight duels, and we no longer carry swords on the street for self-defense, Today we teach people the art, science, and spirit of the sword for its own sake, for its own inherent value, for self-development, for recreation, for enjoyment. The purpose has changed, but the skills we teach are exactly the same. A coach prepares someone for an athletic contest. The purpose of an athletic contest is to win. A coach must know not only technique, tactics, and strategy, but also sports psychology, and physical conditioning, and contest protocols. The choreographer creates the illusion of a fight for theater or film. The choreographer must be able to construct a dance that will reveal character 
and move the story forward. He has to make it look dangerous while at all times prioritizing the safety of the actors. He has to work within sometimes extreme limitations of time, budget, and talent, and still make the fight integrate seamlessly and coherently with the director's vision. The ultimate role of the fencing master is to pass on his knowledge and skill of teaching to others. That is, you have to train your replacement. Teaching people how to teach is very different from teaching people how to fence. Fencing ability is not predictive of teaching ability at all. Fencing and teaching fencing are related but very different skill sets. A champion fencer may be a completely incompetent teacher. And a merely competent fencer may be a really great teacher. These two things require opposite mindsets. The fencer acts solely for his own benefit. The teacher acts solely for the student's benefit. Well, you don't become a fencing master by beating a bunch of other people in fencing contests. Actually, you become a fencing master the same way you become a vampire. Another fencing master has to make you one. As with many other professions, you apprentice yourself to an established master who teaches you the trade. You work for him, assisting him as you learn. The time comes when you present or perform a masterpiece that demonstrates that you have acquired the skills and knowledge of the profession. Or you might attend an academy of arms and encapsulate that apprenticeship into a shorter period of time. That's what I did. I spent three years in an intense study under Jean-Jacques Gillet at the American Fencing Academy. And we learned to be teachers, coaches, choreographers, and a few other things as well. Are there any fencing masters today? Well, well I would have to say yes, wouldn't I? <laughs> but I'm not entirely sure they're, they're making any more. Nearly all the academies have become coaching programs and not fencing master programs. Most people who teach fencing today are, are really coaches. Their orientation is towards sport competition and, and nothing else. Most of them don't even know there's anything else. There are other programs where you can learn how to be a choreographer and create fencing stunts for theater and film. Anyone can be just a coach, or just a choreographer, or just a teacher. You know the story of the blind men and the elephant. The guy who feels the tusk says an elephant is like a horn, and the guy who, who feels the trunk says an elephant is like a snake. And the guy who feels the tail says, oh no, an elephant is like a rope. And the guy who feels the elephant's ear says, oh no, an elephant is like a leaf. The fencing master is the guy who knows the whole elephant. Let me offer you this quote by someone who was a great fencer and a great teacher, Al Donati. This is from his book on fencing published in around 1943. Nadi writes, The noble privilege of the fencing master is to defend and enhance the prestige, passion, and poetry of the sword, and to instill them into the heart and mind of the pupil. While he must be able to treat adequately the spiritual side of the art, his aim and toil is to demonstrate the architectural beauty of the science and the harmonious simplicity of its laws. Only by complete devotion to his profession will he be able to accomplish his duty to help fencing retain and expand its honored place among the more worthwhile activities of mankind. We do our best to carry on the tradition of the fencing master, not to worship ashes, but to preserve fire. Mm -hmm.